You'd like to stay home with your kids, but you still need some income. Is it really possible to be a work-at-home mom? To help us answer that question, we've invited Lindsay Nerl to join us in the Dollar Structure interview. Lindsay Neural is responsible for 1099mom.com. She is mother to six and helps support her family as a blogger, consultant, and public speaker. Thanks for joining us, Lindsay. Hi, Gary. What's uh, the number one thing uh, for someone who's thinking about becoming a work-at-home mom should do? Well, I think that the number one thing you should do is find out what you are skilled at and then find out if that is something you can actually make money from. There's a lot of people that see opportunities and think that pays really well, but it doesn't match up with their schedule, their needs, and what they're good at. Or vice versa, they see things that you know would be a good fit for them personally, but maybe aren't practical to support their family on. So it really is this kind of puzzle and trying to find out what you're good at, what your skills are, what works for your schedule, and then if that is indeed something that pays. Now, it occurs to me that, I mean, one of the first questions that I would think you'd want to ask is, should you work for yourself or try to find a job working for someone else? That is a good question. And if you do not have a lot of experience in the business world, and, and there are a lot of moms that maybe are new moms, um, you know, young, or they've been a stay-at-home mom for a number of years and don't have a very uh, established work experience, it is good to start out either as in a part-time kind of freelance working for yourself opportunity or as an employee because you do often get the training and the support that goes along with that. You kind of hedge your bets a little bit. Yes, definitely. And then now are, are there any secrets to finding the, the right job or business for you? And that, I mean, I know you talked about looking at your own self and your own skills and your schedule and all. Uh, you know, are there any things that, that people kind of sometimes tend to overlook when they're they're putting this this, res, this self resume together? Sure. Um, you know, a lot of times you see jobs that you know, looking at the traditional job sites like the Monster and the Yahoo and Indeed.com, some of the more common places to search for jobs, they won't specifically say that they're a remote or a telecommute position. Um, I will find these same exact jobs advertised somewhere else, like Twitter, and it is being advertised as a remote position. So a lot of times what's not being explicitly described in the job description on the website, you know, you hear from a company that, yeah, they actually would be open to allowing it to be something done from home. So it's good to kind of be following the companies that you'd like to look for following the types of positions that you want to get into, whether that be transcribing or virtual assistant or writing, um, and, and follow those companies that tend to have positions in those fields and see what they're saying on social media or just do a search um, in their Twitter for remote hiring or work at home jobs. And you'll see a lot of positions come up that aren't being advertised specifically as work at home opportunities. But that, that's a lot, lot like the type of uh, research you'd do if you were looking for uh, any job with a corporation. Do a little, a little research to find out what the corporation's like. Definitely. And some jobs, you know, they won't advertise as work at home, but if they're really interested uh, in working with you, you know, it might be one of those things where they say, for two weeks we want you to be on site so we can kind of see what kind of work you do, and then after that it's flexible if you'd like to take that job home. So it may not start out as one, but it can be something you transition into. Now, uh, whether you're working for someone else or working for yourself, uh, working out of your home uh, is uh, kind of an evolving uh, situation for a lot of people right now. Are there some things that a first-timer should watch out for? Definitely. Uh, you know, if you're working as an employee, they really should cover most of the costs of getting started. Uh, the computers, the, the internet, the phone, if anything is special outside of what you would use for personal, if you are an employee, they really should be covering that. If you are an independent contractor, however, you are expected to provide certain high-speed internet types, you know, having a running computer, and not really pay anything outside of what you would just need to get started. The only exception is a lot of times you may have to pay for a background check, um, 
but that is rare. And I would start with like the dollar stretcher I know has reviewed a couple of those jobs where you may have to pay a fee to get started and kind of breaks down what that fee is for. But definitely do your research before you agree to give any money to do a work at home opportunity. Yeah, agreed very much. That, that's a, kind of a, a warning sign uh, in our book. And that, uh, what, uh, having, having been at this for a number of years and doing it successfully, what, what's the most important thing for a prospective work at home mom to know? I would just say that it's really important to understand that your ideal day is never your actual day. Um, and just like any job where you have a to-do list, you know, in an office away from your family, you think you're going to do X, Y, Z, and then the day ends and you haven't quite gotten there, that's only going to be more challenging when you're in your home and you're looking at things like laundry. You know, even if your children are in school or not little and at home with you, there's always going to be things trying to pull your attention away from your work. So keep your expectations realistic and understand that if you think you have six hours in your day to do a job, you probably have closer to four. And not to overcommit to a future employer or a client, something that you haven't mastered how to control yet. And then, now I know uh, I've spent some time on 1099mom.com uh, and it's a wonderful resource. Tell us a little bit about how it started and what you all have on the site. Um, well, it actually started um, when I became a blogger and I got in some nice magazine mentions and I started getting a lot of mail and email and they were asking the same questions. You know, how do I get started? How do I know if a job is a scam? How do I handle taxes? You know, what kind of resume can a work-at-home mom put together if she hasn't worked ever in her life? And these questions just came over and over, and I thought, you know, I should put these emails that I'm replying with on a blog um, where people can search for and have experts come on and do interviews, and it just kind of evolved from there. And now we do actually offer uh, job leads that we've researched every Monday so you can come by and see what kind of opportunities you might be able to do from your home as well. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a wonderful resource, and we encourage uh, encourage our viewers to take a look at it. Uh, well, Lizzie, we want to thank you for sharing your wisdom with uh, with our viewers. We want to thank uh, our viewers for joining us today uh, and invite you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and visit uh, thedollarstructure.com. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon.